Hello, I'm Raina Hirsch, and welcome to Discover Women in Jazz 2022. Jazz FM 91 is proud to promote the second season of Discover Women in Jazz, a program sponsored by the Pat and Tony Adams Freedom Fund for the Arts, a legacy fund bequeathed by Tony Adams to honor the love that he and Pat shared and to continue their tradition of encouraging jazz artists. Tonight is the second of five concerts, all happening during the show Dinner Jazz, sponsored by Yamaha Canada. We also have some special guests in the audience tonight, Ruth and Barry Corvin, longtime Jazz FM 91 supporters, and they celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary last weekend. Happy anniversary and congratulations to you both, Ruth and Barry, and thank you both so much for including Jazz FM 91 on your journey. Our second Discover Women in Jazz artist is saxophonist, composer, and band leader, Ashley Kirkchen. Ashley currently leads and composes for her seven-piece chamber fusion band, Different Era. Ashley can also be heard performing around the GTA with the bands Grace and Human Magic. She has had the pleasure of playing the Halifax Jazz Festival with Chelsea McBride's Socialist Night School, the Inter Beaches International Jazz Festival with Grace and the Achromatics, as well as the Toronto Underground Undergraduate Jazz Festival and the Korean Harvest Festival with Different Era. Everyone, please welcome Ashley Kirkchen. Thank you. 
Thank you. You heard from Nathan Kaur on the guitar, as well as myself. Thank you all so much for coming. Um, so you're going to hear an hour of original music from me. Um, that Most of my pieces have stories. That first one was called Neon Headlights. It doesn't have a story. That's kind of the story in and of itself. Um, yeah, and it's... I just like that song. It's good. Okay, moving on. Um, the next piece that uh, we're going to play is called The Calm. Normally... Normally, I write a lot of angry music. It got to the point that, yeah, I heard that. <laughs> um, it got to the point that I had to make a pact with myself that I was going to write one happy, uplifting song a year, and it started with this piece. Um, so when you listen to this piece, I would like you to imagine that even though there might be a lot going on around you, you're kind of in like the eye of a storm. So no matter what's going on inside, you're just, or sorry, what, no matter what's going on outside, um, in where you are, you're just appreciating the peace and the calm uh, before you have to go back to reality. So once again, this is the calm.
Thank you. That was Brendan Vardy on the tenor saxophone and Nathan Core on the guitar. Um, next up, we're getting back into the angsty stuff. Only a little sorry. Um, so this next piece, uh, I, you know, for the two people that don't know here, I'm also a music therapist. Um, and as a person working in healthcare, no matter when, um, especially when you're new to the field, um, it just happens that sometimes it's hard to process emotionally what's going on. Um, and yes, that happened to me. I, there was a point at that time where I wasn't doing great and people on the outside would, you know, with no ill intent would say, oh, but you're a therapist. You understand how to do, you understand how to handle this. Don't ever say that to a therapist, just by the way. Um, so this was my way of kind of trying to process how, you know, that was happening, what was going on, um, and trying to give a little idea of what it might be like to kind of go through that because it's not every day that that happens um, and it's kind of weird I'm not gonna lie it's kind of weird to be on the other side of that um, and at this point I just so happened to be watching a little known Netflix to, uh, show called Stranger Things so I uh, wrote the first piece inspired by uh, what happened in the first season so you are about to hear the upside down and because I am allowed to create a good Resol resolution, um, we are going to follow that with the right side up. Screaming, trying to fight the monsters 
reaching out to anyone, anyone who sends a signal. But do they know that the worst is yet to come? And how could they know when the words you say just don't give way to anything? surface of your soul. Well, here I am. What say you to the one who hides in the distance? Don't lose track. It's fading fast. To survive it takes more than to say I'm breathing. And can you hear me? And can't you see? I'm right here next to you. I'm screaming. Waiting here with no direction. Trying not to fall, try to stay afloat, trying to save me from myself. Try to stay alive, please save me.
Ashley Kirkjen, ladies and gentlemen. That was wonderful. That was absolutely wonderful. Um, so you've made mention of a couple of them as you've been playing, but would you care to introduce us to your fabulous band that you have with you today? Absolutely. So we have Wes Colette Taylor on the bass. <laughs> we have Nathan Kaur on the guitar. And we have Brendan Vardy on the tenor saxophone. You're sounding absolutely amazing. So tell me a little bit about your journey into jazz. How did you wind up in this, in this beautiful area? Well, I started as a classical musician. Um, and up until about halfway through high school, or maybe even later than that, um, I was basically set on going to do a classical degree in classical saxophone. Um, and then Music Fest Nationals happened, and I played with a, um, I think it was a combo and a jazz band, and um, the one and only Alex Dean approached me and said, why aren't you going to Humber or U of T? And he uh, kind of convinced me then and there, and they offered me a, um, a spot in the degree program, and I kind of just went from there. And just kind of fell in love with it. Yeah, it was, yeah, <laughs> it was great. Yeah. So had it always been the saxophone for you? Is that the instrument that you started on? Uh, no, I started on piano. Um, and then in grade six, so in like middle school-ish, you were allowed to pick a band instrument and the saxophone was the coolest. So I went with the saxophone um, and started to learn the woodwinds back, or not back in Humber, but like while I was at Humber. So you know, the woodwind force started getting bigger and bigger. Um, and I guess the rest is history. <laughs> and what is it about the saxophone that you love so much? It's probably the closest to sounding like a human voice without being a human voice. So it's a lot, um, I feel like it's a lot easier to kind of sound like me on a saxophone or even some of the woodwinds. Um, rather than sounding like you are emulating someone by you know pushing keys on a piano for example or strumming strings on a guitar it just feels like it's a little more individualized that's awesome <laughs> we are we are thrilled to have you as part of this discovering women in jazz series what has the experience been like being part of this series it's been absolutely wonderful um it was definitely a good way to get me back into gear being a band leader because you know the pandemic has been hard on all of us um, and the fact that we haven't been playing as much um, it was a really really good opportunity to bring these guys together and uh, try some of the music that I have wanted to play in a while and playing them in the setting. And how does it feel to be back playing again? It's great. Yeah. <laughs> So do you have any advice for any women starting to come up thinking about jazz, wanting to get into maybe playing the saxophone? What would you, what would you tell them? Um, I would say that it's okay to break the mold um, because I remember when I was in Humber, um, this was, it was no one's fault, but I just always felt that I had to emulate um, the people that I was listening to and I did not feel like I was authentically myself and the more that I play the saxophone the more that I've been a musician the more that I've been a composer um, it's just every single time it's a lesson of hey you don't have to do that if you don't want to you can do what is authentically you and it's going to sound like authentically you and that's a good thing Absolutely. Well, I know that we definitely want to hear a lot more from y'all. Um, would you, would you, uh, can we pass it over to you and you'll play us, uh, play us a little more? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. All right.
So that piece was called The Inspector. If there was a story, I forgot it. Um, so, <laughs> so yeah, I guess that's two now, but you know, I guess majority wins. Anyway, next piece that we have, uh, this is a new one, so you are all hearing it for the first time ever. Um, as I guess we all know, the pandemic was hard on everybody. And as I've said before, I work in healthcare. And I wanted to write something for those people that have been working tirelessly for the last almost three years. Um, so I decided to write this. Uh, it's it's called Lullaby for Smiling Eyes because, you know, how are you supposed to emote when you have half of a face covered? You use your eyes. So they were always smiling. They were always great. Um, and this is for when, you know, everything is clear, this is your permission to rest. So this is, uh, once again, Lullaby for Smiling Eyes.
Thank you. Uh, before we go into our last piece of the night, it's a two for one again, don't worry. Um, I just wanted to quickly thank my band for hanging out with me this hour, for Jazz FM for hosting us and for the awesome opportunity, for the Pat and Tony Adams Freedom Fund for the Arts as well, for helping make this happen, it, and for everybody that's behind the scenes right now for you know making all of this awesome. So just extra thank you for all of you. Um, so the last piece that we have for you um, is probably one of my first experiences um, with grief as a young adult, and this was me trying to process that. Um, and it's called The Title Suite, and this was a former bandmate that actually named this piece The Title Suite. Um, and uh, the more that I think about it, the more I think this is just the piece that this band is known for. So it is our... I guess it's like your title piece, kind of like you have a title track in an album. Anyway, so without further ado, this is the title suite.
Ashley Kirkton, everybody. A very big thank you to everybody who supports Jazz FM 91 and the Discover Women in Jazz series. Many thanks to Pat and Tony Adams' Freedom Fund for the Arts, as well as the long-standing partnership with RBC Emerging Artists for Jazzology. For more information, head to our website, jazz.fm. And remember, this performance will be rebroadcast in an upcoming episode of Sound of Jazz. I'm Raina Hirsch. Thank you so much for joining us this evening, and have a wonderful evening. And now to play us out, once again, Ashley Kirkton. <laughs>